My name is uh, Muhammad Haruna Manta. I'm the High Commissioner of Nigeria. The, the world is seen as a global village. Whether from the west or from the east, the emphasis I thought for Africa should be who will be our trading partner uh, and not the, the very radical posture of uh, the socialist concept, which probably was very relevant in the, uh, after the Berlin Conference, 1880 something, 1884, 85. But today, uh, we don't have colonialism to fight as such because the whole of Africa has been decolonized. South Africa is independent, Namibia is independent, and so is the whole African continent, with the exception of probably some aggression against uh, Western Sahara. So if, is it not time that EFF takes a posture that is more uh, inclusive of development concepts rather than uh, imaginary fighting uh, colonialists that do not exist in any way? Because the interest of the world is more virtually focused on how do I develop on uh, the economic concept, how do I attract? Sometimes uh, the development economies call it uh, uh, foreign direct investment, FDI. How do I attract that? So I would like to know what the EFF thinks about uh, the e economic integration of the African continent as well as what the AU has done in uh, promulgating or forming the Africa continental free trade area as well as the 26 regional bodies, continental bodies that become a meeting of elite without concrete solutions to the problems confronting the people of Africa. We have a problem in Mozambique. The problem is solved by sending soldiers. Where have you ever seen soldiers solving a problem? Soldiers don't solve a problem. The leadership must meet and discuss and come up with a binding decision. That's why we say we need one legislature, one military, one currency, one president, so that we know when we go into Mozambique, it's not an interference, it's us providing a solution to our own problems. So we are not happy with how these things are uh, structured. Look, economic integration, trading partners, developmental concepts, we embrace all of that, but it doesn't mean we're ideologically naive. We're not ideologically naive, we're political. And therefore, um, if we were to trade with the USA or to trade with the UK, we trade from a perspective of knowing that we don't share the same ideologies when you approach them you know these ones are brutal i must not sleep on the job they are not friends we are not born alone we are born with people that's what friends are for and to have friends that are aligned with you ideologically is nothing wrong it's not an old-fashioned thing it's actually apolitical to want to approach politics without ideological orientation from which ground do you move from what informs your perspective as a person who is a political animal? It's important always to have our ideolo sharing ideological perspective with China. It doesn't mean you can't get a foreign direct investment from Norway or from UK or from a, a Germany. No. You always relate with all countries. Foreign direct investment is more than welcome, but on our terms. Not on Germany's terms. No. We have been giving Germany a lot of money here in South Africa for assembling cars. Not for building cars, for assembling cars. Why is Germany not building those cars here? And create jobs here. In South Africa, we have a problem of unemployment. Germany will not have a problem. It needs leadership that is decisive, that is going to say, look, we are going to meet you halfway, but you have to meet us halfway. Assembling is not enough. Let's start it here and build it here. So 
We, we, and Germany's investment under the EFF government is not threatened at all. The same as any other investment. But we are going to renegotiate the deals. And they must be to the interest of Africans. Botswana did it now, where uh, DBS just wanted to change a diamond deal and all of Botswana said it's not going to happen. You are going to trade here and do diamond here on our terms. Botswana screamed, I mean, DBS screamed, kicked, did all manner of things. If this thing is not signed by when, when we leave, they said you can go. But yeah, we are going to sign the deal on our terms. DBS went back and signed. So that's leadership. Investors want to know what is your position on this matter so that they can navigate around it and see if they can still make profit out of it. They are not interested in you or in anything. They are interested in politics. That's why they mine blood diamond. They know people are being killed there. People, this diamond comes from where people are being killed. They still take it. Why do they want to behave like a holy cows and want to punish people for political ideas, yet they don't punish people who are killing each other for diamonds? They go there and still buy blood diamonds. So be clear, then they will come and invest. Even on the land question, we've got uh, FD, uh, special development zones, economic zones here in South Africa where multinational companies have invested a lot of money on the land they don't own. It's owned by the state. Special industrial zones, special uh, economic zones in South Africa where multinational companies have put billions of rents. They don't own that land. So why, what is the obsession with the ownership of the land? Why do you say when people own, the, when you state own the land, the multinational companies want to invest because there is no guarantee? No, you give them uh, the guarantee that from this period to this period, this is yours, these are the benefits, these are the incentives, this is what is going to happen. Please invest here. They will invest. They have done it now under this government. Why do you say when people don't own the land, there won't be investment? There is a huge development that happened right in front of us. You said, you, one of you said, was here for nine years. I think uh, it's a dean of diplomatic corps. There's a huge development here in Midrand where there is Mall of Africa. That land, that big development you see there, that land is owned by an Indian family. When you buy property there, there are no transfer costs. No one owns. They are on a lease of 100 years, those people. Yet they still buy there. Black, white, Indians, everyone buys in a place where they don't own the land. A land is owned by an individual family. They're still in, there's a huge mall invested there in the land they don't own. People are not looking for... For, for those things of ownership of the land. They just want a land tenure guarantee that from this period to this period, this is yours. They calculate, they say, we'll make a profit. Then that's fine. Let's go. That's how business works. Who said people fall in love with land? There's no one who falls in love with land. No one falls in love with diamond or gold. They fall in love with money. Anything that can give them money, they will, they will go and invest in it. Um... Socialism didn't work in Germany, and you are going to tell us how it failed. But go and also learn from China how socialism works, and it has succeeded in China. It doesn't mean if it has failed in Germany, it will fail everywhere else. We are not Germans, we are South Africans. In China, they've got socialism with Chinese characteristics. What stops South Africans from having socialism with South African characteristics? Learning from Germany, what worked, what did not work. Take the good things, leave the bad things. Why capitalism always resort to Chinese principles, I mean to socialist principles, every time they get into trouble? When the banks failed in 2008, 
and put the world into a financial crisis. It was socialist principles that took the world out of that crisis through state intervention. Where was capital at that time? If we go now, we are in Pretoria now, let's go to commercial crimes or go to liquidation or high court and all of that. Every day without fail, there are private companies that are being liquidated there. Who said if it's capitalist owned or private owned is inherently successful? Who said that? So it's, it's, an, it's an ideological debate we can have. We know what happened in Eastern Germany. We know what happened in the Soviet Union. We know what's happening in China. We know what's happening in Cuba. So we can have a, a deeper discussion about whether this uh, is really a way out. We, we sometimes get fixated on concepts, but in reality you do the things that you say you don't want to do. Every time capital gets into problems, the state must intervene. Every time. That's when you now see the importance of socialist uh, principles. Coalitions in South Africa will work. Qua you know, um, this thing is a new thing to us. We don't know it. And, and we're learning on the job. We're learning on the job. So please be patient with us. We have succeeded so far. No municipality has actually completely collapsed uh, to a point of uh, uh, having to be resuscitated by an upper government under coalition. So, it's a new thing. We're learning on the job and we'll get it right. The problem is not coalitions. The problem is the ANC and the DA. They are so used to power. And when they now get out of power into a coalition, they still want to behave like they are in power. Coalition means power sharing. You must let go. Don't behave like you still have power when you don't have power. You must share. And we will make the best a coalition partner because we have never been in power. So we don't know power. Maybe the first power we're going to experience is through coalition and it will be the first experience. But those who are used to controlling power, when it shifts, they are still in denial and they want to behave like they still have power. And it leads into the problems we see uh, in, the, in the coalitions. At the center of a problem is the ANC. It has been in power for too long. When it gets removed into a coalition, it is in denial. Same thing as the DA. That suffers from white supremacy. That in coalition with black people, a white person must lead. That white supremacist mentality is what causes problems for us in coalitions. But otherwise, coalitions will work. And coalitions are the best thing for me. I think we deserve that. Where no one has got an absolute majority. We all govern through consensus. And we look at what is in the best interest of our people. Because too much power corrupts. And that's what we have experienced since uh, 1994. Ask from you. That's a big brother mentality. What are you going to ask from us? Yes, don't say, we, why should it be us who are asking? We're not asking for anything. We're fine. So, let's relate as equals. Not as a beggar and uh, uh, the big brother supplier. No. We will relate with the European Union. It's a necessary body. We'll relate with it. We'll respect it. And the respect must be mutual and will engage on what is in the interest of our countries, not what is in the interest of the European Union. We are in a mess now. We have decommissioned uh, our power stations because uh, countries like the USA, uh, like the UK have said to us, no, do away with these things. We are going to introduce uh, green energy. Yes, the money and all of that. People took the money. There is no electricity today. So we ought to relate as equals so that no one imposes their ideas on us. 
We are people that subscribe to superior logic. Anything that is scientific, anything that has been proven, anything that makes sense, we'll agree with it. It doesn't matter whether it comes from European Union or it comes from BRICS or it comes from China or Russia. No, we will not agree with anything that seeks to belittle us and make us uh, look like we are beggars in this kind of a relationship. So that's the same with Agoa. You can't use Agoa to threaten us in terms of our sovereignty and our foreign policy. That if you are going to bring uh, Putin here and not defy will do away with Agoa, you can do away with Agoa. We remain with our sovereignty. Should you strip us of our dignity because we are disparately looking for Agoa? That our foreign policy is now determined somewhere else. Which nation can be proud of that? That our foreign policy is determined somewhere because we are beneficiaries of our goal. It can be correct. Let, let's, let's trade uh, and have those benefits of Agoa out of mutual understanding and respect for each other's sovereignty and foreign policy. Not that today because we don't agree on Putin, you must withdraw the whole thing. That is puppeting. That is belittling. That is making us look like we are beggars. But le let's remain with our dignity. Let's be beggars with dignity, not stripped of dignity and thinking that you are what you are not. You can't even make your own foreign policy determinations because Agoa will be taken away. We, 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 we are spreading the wings of the EFF um, we have EFF in Liberia, we have EFF in Lesotho, we have EFF in Namibia, we have EFF in Zimbabwe. We, have, we, we, we are a young organization in terms of age, but already we are finding an expression in other um, African countries because we are trying to uh, take this spirit into other African countries. We need to strengthen AU, give it more teeth to bite. The decisions of the AU must be taken and they must be firm, firmly uh, implemented by countries of Africa if we are going to say this is a serious uh, uh, continental body. Business has no choice. We are the only organization that is very clear of what we want. Uh, and therefore, business in dealing with the EFF, they know what... Uh, uh, um, they are dealing with policy po po position is very clear. so uh, guys 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 this is this is very interesting again now from this particular episode here we've really seen that Malema okay from this particular diplomatic your know, breakfast that he did had of course uh, some years down the line it did uh, you know one thing did come out very clear that you see uh, there is the lip service, there's too much of the lip service that is, you know, going on in Africa, even as we watch from this particular, uh, you know, high commission, the Nigerian high commission to South Africa. But then, you see, it's like, what is it that one thing that this particular, you know, Nigerian high commission didn't see or doesn't exactly grasp as far as uh, the African struggles is concerned? And to me, what comes out clear or maybe as part of my you know uh, observation here is that you know there are those ones who are still playing you know uh, psychophones to the west and uh, you know you cannot call a spade a big spoon so you call a spade a spade and uh, of course the African Union even as it has been brought out in this particular context is that uh, it is a toothless dog shall I say that also something that needs to be given that mandate power you know to execute some of the issues that are affecting the Africans at large but of course that has always been my uh, you know humble opinion I also do start corrected and I also buy into your you know comments your sentiments of what exactly you think you know the, the direction that Africa is headed towards even as you're seeing these particular young leaders from Africa rising up to the mantle to take up their rightful positions in the international arena now and uh, of course that is again as I said in my humble opinion do drop us your comments in the comment section let us exactly know what you think of you know uh, this uh, episode on this particular video
video here, what needs to be done, what needs to be changed, or the changes that need to be done here and here and there. And of course, any other leader that in um, you know that you would wish maybe uh, for us to focus on. And to remember, we are listening. We usually go back to the past, of course, to define our future. In other words, we study the past to define. You know the future and the direction uh, towards which uh, we as Africans we should take and this particular platform so if again you are again new in this particular platform here do you know subscribe leave that particular notification bell on you know you'll be the first one to be notified immediately we do our know, future uploads and again it is your guide lead here stay tuned <music>